I'm Jason Epperson, this is RV Miles, and it's time for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. A widely reported story out of Minnesota has a lot of RVers concerned that it might lead to a reduction in Walmarts, allowing them to overnight in their parking lots. Back in August of 2019, a woman went into a Minnesota Walmart, leaving her two children sleeping in her minivan. It was around 6 a.m. and she had just dropped her mother off at the airport. The girls, ages six and nine, were tired after being woken up early, according to court documents. She decided to let them sleep while she went shopping. When she came back outside, the minivan was in flames. She watched and waited while firefighters eventually pulled the girls from the van. The younger of the two died in the hospital and her big sister survived but is permanently disfigured due to severe burns. It's a heartbreaking story that's now three years old, but what does it have to do with RVers? Well, it turns out the fire was started by a man who was overnight camping in his own minivan at the Walmart with his wife. The morning of the fire, he used a camping stove to make breakfast. Once finished, he put it into the back of the vehicle without waiting for it to cool, then drove from the back of the lot to a parking space closer to the entrance, right next to the sleeping girls. The man went into the store and the camping stove ignited a fire in his vehicle. His wife tried to put out the flames, but was unsuccessful. Their vehicle was engulfed along with the one next to it with the two sleeping girls inside. The man pled guilty to two counts of negligent fire causing great bodily harm and was sentenced back in 2020 to 120 days in jail and three years probation. But now the mother of the children is suing Walmart for relief, citing Walmart's policy of allowing unsupervised overnight camping as a form of negligence. Quote, unmonitored overnight guests pose a foreseeable heightened risk to other Walmart shoppers and nearby residents, the lawsuit says. It continues, Walmart also fails to inform guests and the public at large about the potentially dangerous conditions created by the free camping policy and lack of oversight. The family's attorneys are seeking a minimum of $75,000 in relief. In the text of the lawsuit, attorneys blame the company for its well-known policy of allowing people to stay in store parking lots overnight without monitoring those guests to help ensure the safety of other customers. Quote, Walmart encouraged and permitted a dangerous condition on its property. Walmart escalated that danger by failing to provide staff to oversee the appropriate use of its parking lot as a campground. Walmart has a well-known policy that's actually published on its website, allowing RVers to park overnight in its parking lots where allowable by local ordinances and at the discretion of the store manager. In the last few years, we've seen more and more Walmart stores end this policy, either due to new local ordinances, an increase in homeless encampments or trash and crime, or a lack of staff to clean and maintain parking lots. Many longtime RVers have noted an abundance of people taking advantage of Walmart's policy in recent years, going so far as to stay in the parking lot for several days and even setting up chairs and cooking outside as if it were a campground. We've even seen photos of campfires set on the pavement at Walmart. Still, a great number of Walmarts allow customers to park overnight. Walmart has commented to several news outlets that it will defend itself in court, but has made no comment as to any change in policy. It's worth noting too, that there have been many incidents like this over the years in Walmart parking lots. There's a lot more news ahead, but first, this episode is sponsored by our friends at RoadPass, makers of the Togo RV app. Download it for free on Apple or Android and use it for RV maintenance reminders and checklists and storing all the data about your RV. They have all kinds of RV ownership information, including a new course from Abby and myself on RV buying. If you like the app, you can get a RoadPass Pro membership, which unlocks all of the premium features of the Togo RV app. It's $49.99 a year and gives you turn-by-turn -turn RV GPS routing, lots of great discounts on things like tires and lithium batteries and more. A RoadPass membership also includes premium features at Campendium, Road Trippers, R Village, along with the overnight RVParking.com database of truly verified boondocking spots. Download the free Togo RV app, and if you decide to upgrade to a RoadPass Pro membership, you can save $10 off with the promo code RVMILES10X. A few new truck announcements from Ford. First up, the 2023 Super Duty is on its way, and though details haven't been revealed yet, plenty of camouflaged F-250s and F-350s have been spotted taking test drives over the last several months. The Super Duty will get a refresh in its styling, but probably not as dramatic of a change as some were expecting. All of the major truck brands have scaled back plans for big changes to their truck lineup, mainly because they don't have to. 
they can barely make the orders they have right now. Ford stopped taking new orders for 2022 Super Duties altogether back in March, and in a normal year, we'd be starting to see 2023s hit dealer lots this fall. But Ford Authority sources say that production on 2023s won't even begin until January. Ford Authority says it's also confirmed that the Super Duty will not be getting the widely expected hybrid powertrain option and that the engine lineup will remain pretty much the same. Ford has confirmed that order books will open back up for the Super Duty in mid-October, so we'll probably hear about the 2023 model year changes very soon. Ford has also just reopened the order banks for the Lightning Electric F-150 with increased pricing. The base Pro model will now cost you $47,000, while the Platinum Extended Range trim will cost you an incredible $97,000. Garmin has come out with two new models of GPS units made for RVers, the RV795 and the RV Cam 795, nearly identical units except the Cam version has a built-in dash cam. I did a full review in a recent video, but the Cliffs notes are that it's pretty much the same navigation as the RV890 and 1090 with a smaller 7-inch screen, replacing the 780 in Garmin's lineup. There are a couple new cool features though. Both models allow you to see a satellite view of your final destination and let you click on what entrance you would like to use or where you want to park. It'll then guide you directly to that spot. The RV cam version works just like any other dash cam, but combining it with a GPS allows Garmin to use it for some driver assistance features that are available on most new cars and trucks, audio and visual alerts for lane departure warnings and imminent collision warning. The device also displays on a map where you were when dash cam video was recorded. If you want to see the full review, I'll link to it in the description. Most of Death Valley National Park remains closed after the flash flood that we talked about last week, which is now being described as a one in 1,000 year event, which doesn't mean it happens once per thousand years, rather that there's a 0.1% chance of it occurring in any given year. Even though the park is closed, some navigational apps are routing travelers onto primitive backcountry dirt roads to avoid the paved road closures. Park rangers have had to be diverted from flood recovery operations to aid stranded motorists. Some had all four tires on their vehicle flat, according to a press release. Backcountry dirt road travel is strongly discouraged in the summer under normal conditions at Death Valley, as there's an increase of being stranded in a remote location in extreme heat. According to the National Weather Service, temperatures in Death Valley have been 114 and up in the past days. The park is not expected to reopen before August 19th. Meanwhile, another flash flood event on Monday closed the southern portion of Joshua Tree National Park for several days, but that park is now mostly reopened. Finally, new RV registrations are down for another month. According to Statistical Surveys, Inc., who tracks such things, 46,821 retail registrations were recorded in June, which is down 32% compared to the 68,000 plus in June of last year. It's a big drop that mirrors what we saw for May, but for context, it's still 10% more RVs than were sold in June of 2019 pre-pandemic. That's it for this week's RV and camping news roundup. Please hit the like button if you got something out of this video. Hit subscribe if you want more like it. Check us out on the RV Miles podcast each and every week, and we'll see you next time.